Hello! Now, I think I am the perfect journalist to do this review because I don't like the Toyota Hilux and I don't like the Ford Ranger. But I'm not biased because I actually can't stand all Buckies equally. I've even grown a beard to look a bit more rugged for this review. The thing about Buckies for me is they're too big and they're too stupid and they're too difficult to live with in cities. You basically drive around looking at parking spaces going, that's too small. That's too small. That's too small. Anyway, today we're going to try to work out which one annoys me the least, and that is going to be our winner. Let's go! Of course, my personal views aside, Buckies are a hugely important part of the South African market, and hundreds of thousands of them find homes every year. We've tested every Bucky currently on the market extensively and the Leisure Double Cap segment is an integral part of our annual Cars.coza Consumer Awards powered by Westpac. Welcome to the awesome Felgelegen 4x4 facility about an hour outside of Cape Town. Now this is just about the perfect place to film a Bucky comparison. Mostly because we can fly a drone, there's no traffic cops and there are some awesome 4x4 trails. So let me get some important details out up front about this head-to-head. -head. The Hilux I'm driving right now is a manual and the Ranger we have here today is an automatic. That's a pretty big difference and it's not really our fault. Toyota South Africa have not put an automatic Hilux in the media fleet. But what it does mean is that I'm not going to make a pronouncement on how good these cars are off-road because it is a pretty different off-roading experience manual compared to auto. What I am going to talk a lot about is the price difference. This Raider 4x4 manual costs 46,000 Rand more than the Ranger Auto XLT we have here today. And if you add an auto box to this Hilux Raider, the difference is 67,000 Rand. And I'm trying to work out why. From the outside at least, the Hilux does look better. You get these bigger wheels, you get that chrome roll bar which looks really good and that's obviously missing on the XLT spec and you get LED headlights. But other than that, it's quite difficult to tell why there's such a huge price difference between these two cars in these specific specs. And it still blows my mind that you spend all this money on a Raider and you have to give Toyota an extra 12,500 Rand XVAT for leather seats and an extra 7,500 Rand XVAT if you want a tow bar. And I'm guessing you probably do. And while I'm outside the cars, let me tell you one of the aspects which drives me nuts about Bucky's. If you live out here and you need to carry sheep around, great, that's what Bucky's are for. But most of us live in the city. And then where do you put your stuff? Where do you put your laptop, for instance? You can't put it on the back seat, it's not safe. You put it in the load bed, just rolls around while you're driving and breaks. And I know you can get tonneau covers and I know you can get those fancy armadillo things, but I'd love to hear from you. Leave a comment in the section below. I'd love to hear how you've sorted out this problem. Let's look at the cabins. Now, when it comes to comparing these two cars, I think it's important to make a distinction between build quality and quality of materials. Now, in terms of the latter, the Ford is not as great as the Hilux. It's a bit of a problem I have with the entire Ford range, really. They seem to use plastics which feel just a bit cheaper than that of the competition. So I wouldn't say that the Ford is less well screwed together than the Hilux. There's no squeaks or rattles in here at all, but the Hilux's interior does feel a bit more expensive. So yes, it does look a bit more elegant in here, a bit more upmarket, except of course for the cloth seats. The other place where the Hilux lacks a little bit as well is infotainment. It does look good and you do get sat-nav as standard in this top spec 2.8 Raider model, but CarPlay, Android Auto, both missing, and of course the voice control in the Ford is really, really advanced. The other place where the Ford does really well too, and here's a bit of a secret about me, on my way to shoots in the morning, I like to listen to Taylor Swift. Life is too short to not admit that you like Taylor Swift, and it just sounds so much better in the Ford, hashtag Swifties. Right, the Ranger XLT. Now the big news here is the smaller engine. There's a new gearbox, new engine, and new suspension. Let's start with the engine. It's a two liter turbo diesel. It's now the smallest engine you can get 
in the Ranger range, but it is the most advanced and the most efficient, and that's why it's here. I really feel for the Volkswagen Amarok because that came out with a two liter a long time ago and everyone really ragged it about it. Now the Rangers come out with a two liter and I haven't heard that many complaints. But keep in mind that the engine in this XLT model is a single turbo diesel and the one in the Wild Track and the new Raptor, that is a bi-turbo diesel offering more power and more torque. So in here you get 132 kilowatts and 420 newton meters, which is just two kilowatts more than in the larger engine Hilux, and it has exactly the same torque figure. So really between these two cars on paper, there's nothing between them in terms of power output. So it's all about feel. And out here and on tarmac, the Ranger just feels a bit more comfortable than the Hilux. So there's a new suspension set up for this car and it really has done wonders. Now, I mean, the Ranger never used to ride badly on the road. It was always actually pretty good, but now it's really good. In fact, without being able to drive all the buckies in the segment back to back, I would say that this could be the best ride available in the double cab bucky segment right now. And when it comes to that gearbox, yeah, 10 speed auto. That is a lot of gears, isn't it? But it's really good. It's good around town. It's good on the open road. You never really know that the gearbox is there. And that's exactly what you want from a gearbox. But interestingly, out here on these trails going slow speed, it does feel like the gearbox is a little bit confused. It feels like the car is trying to modulate the throttle inputs and not really getting it right. And the thing is, it's been persistent all day. It's just noticeable, something to keep an eye on if you do take your Ranger off-road. I've jumped back into the Hilux now, and one of the huge differences between these two cars is the displacement of the engine, 2.8 versus two liters. So your engine in this Hilux is 40% larger, and if you like displacement, well, then this is the car for you. But to be honest with you, if nobody told you that this was a bigger engine, I don't think you'd really notice. I would say that the Hilux's engine does feel slightly less strained out here, maybe, coping with these really difficult conditions. And a lot of journalists like to talk about tractability, tractable engines. I don't really like that word. It just means easy to control or influence. And to me, a lot of that's down to the gearbox. And again, we can't really make that comparison between a 10-speed auto and a six-speed manual. I think the best way to think about it is that the Ranger offers more of a car-like ride quality, whereas the Hilux feels a bit more like a bucky. You know, ladder frame chassis, a little bit of jiggle between the body and the chassis, that sort of thing. Can't believe I just jiggled. I'm not having a good day. Admitted to Taylor Swift, now I'm jiggling. Oh, that's not reverse. Right, let's go over some key stats that you're probably very interested in. Towing is an important part of Bucky ownership and in this respect, Ford and Toyota claim identical figures of 3,500 kilograms. In terms of payload, however, the Ranger dominates with a claimed figure of just over a ton, while Toyota claims 815 kilograms for the Hilux. Fuel consumption is of course an important consideration, and these two models, at least on paper, are extremely close, and both cars have identically sized 80-litre fuel tanks. Both cars offer low range, and in terms of size, the Ranger is longer overall with a significantly longer wheelbase. And last but not least, Ford offers a longer warranty at 4 year 120,000 kilometers. While the service plans are difficult to compare, as Toyota now breaks their service plan down into nine services, rather than a time-based or kilometer-based limit. If you're going to be looking at a Hilux or a Ranger, there are many variants to choose from. And really, the XLT shouldn't be a rival to the Raider. That's pretty much the Wild Tracks job. And Toyota does sell a cheaper Hilux, it's called the SRX, but that is really poorly specced. And that just shows you how good value this XLT really is. In some cases, it's even better spec than this Raider, which costs quite a bit more. And sure, it definitely doesn't look as appealing as the Hilux, but I've calculated that 
If you want a Hilux with an automatic gearbox, a tow bar and leather seats, you have to pay 87,000 Rand more than you do for this Ranger XLT. So you could take that 87K and tart up your Ranger to the nines. Just please don't buy a fake Raptor kit. Just don't do it. Just walk away. The other thing to keep in mind is that the Ranger has an extra year and an extra 20,000 kilometers on its warranty. So product for product, they both have their pros and cons. I think the Ranger does offer an overall better ride quality, but the Hilux does look and feel a bit more appealing. And in a country where a Bucky is a status symbol, that really does mean something. But when it comes down to the fairly straightforward issue of value for money, this Ford Ranger XLT really runs away with it. That being said, Toyota is the current brand of the year in our consumer awards, which takes in consumer survey data about actually living with these vehicles. The data provided by thousands of South African motorists suggests that the ownership experience in the Toyota would be superior to that in the Ford. For more information on our awards and all the winners, head to carsawards.co.za or click the link which has just appeared at the top of your screen. Thanks for watching. Hello, welcome to the end of the video. Public service announcement, all the stuff around me is clickable on your cell phone. Well, I mean, pressable.